As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm giving you a studio tour. And behind me is a beautiful fireplace, beautiful clocks. You know, when you live in Moscow, you're very close to Europe and a lot of other countries, so you have available things that are not available probably where you live. And this beautiful fireplace really is hand carved and it is from Italy. And on top of the fireplace is a clock. And it looks like there are vases on either side of the clock, but they're not vases. They also are clocks. Have you ever seen a clock that's round that moves like this? All three of these are clocks. You say, why do you have those clocks on the fireplace mantel in your studio? Well, first of all, because I want you to enjoy the set. But secondly, these clocks say something to me. When I see these clocks, I think about time and the value of time. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16, we are to redeem the time because the days are evil. That word redeem really means make the most of every opportunity, buy back time, which means if you've lost time because of stupidity or mistakes, the grace of God will enable you to buy back that time and get it back again. When I come into this set and I begin to prepare programs for you, I'm thinking about time the importance of that moment, that you would allow me to come into your home, that you would give me that time, that I could bring the teaching of the Bible to you. I realize we have to make the most of every second we have, and so do you. But if you've wondered what these are and why they're on the mantle, now you know. They remind me that we need to redeem the time because the days are evil. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust. A message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. Welcome to today's program. It's Friday. It's the end of the week. And before your weekend gets started, if you need prayer, call us. We really want to hear from you. Just call the number on the screen or write to us. And the moment you call or the moment your email shows up in our inbox, we're really going to begin to pray with you and ask God to move and to give you a glorious weekend. Amen. By the way, be sure to go to your church on Sunday. You need to go to church. But call us if you need prayer. We would love to pray with you. And I want to remind you that if you're not a partner, please pray about joining us. The Bible tells us in Matthew 28, verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. That was not a verse just given to preachers. That was given to the church. That's me, that's you, that's every one of us. We have a responsibility to go. You might say, well, I don't know how to go. I live here in my house, in my town. I have a job. How do I go? Well, when you become a partner, you help us go. And my friends, God doesn't just empower us. He empowers every giver. There are blessings for anyone who goes or for those who help others to go and when you become a partner, a partner is somebody who regularly supports our ministry financially. When you become a partner, you help us to go and you're going with us. As we teach all nations this week, I got a report about all the nations of the world that are tuning in. Brazil, Indonesia, India, the whole planet. People are tuning in for the teaching of the Bible. You help us do that when you become a partner. In fact, we can't do it without the partnership of our partners. That's why we call them partners. And if you're not a partner yet, please become a partner. We'll immediately send you Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness. And we'll send you my book called Life in the Combat Zone. These are our way of welcoming you into the partner family. And friend, if you're already a partner, amen. Thank you so much. You're making such a difference. By the way, you become a partner by going online or by just calling us right now. And I want to remind you also that we're offering you my new series that I've been teaching called Symbols of the Holy Spirit. It's 10 parts. It comes in multiple formats. And the study guide is so wonderful. With the study guide, you can listen or you can watch and you can read along. The study guide is amazing. In fact, I would encourage you to go to our website, to the store, runner.org, and look at all the study guides. 
We put so much work into the study guides for you. It's not for us. We do it for you. And we want you to avail yourself to all of them. Also, right now, we're offering you my book, which is called Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. I was looking at the table of contents, and I just want to read a couple names of the chapters. One is called What Exactly Are the Gifts of the Holy Spirit? How many gifts of the Holy Spirit are too many? Is it possible to have too many gifts of the Holy Spirit? God wants to use you in spiritual gifts. And the final chapter is called, Let's Be Logical About All of This. For me, that chapter was really important because I'm a logical kind of guy. It has to make sense to me. Why would God want us to have spiritual gifts? So I logically wrap it up in chapter 10. And by the time you get through the 10th chapter, you're going to say, wow, now I can see why we need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're also offering you right now my other book on the Holy Spirit, which is called The Holy Spirit and You, Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. You will love this book. And if you know someone else that's really hungry to know more about the Spirit of God, this is the book you ought to give them. Let this book be your missionary. Give it to them and let it do the work for you. Wow. Order your copy today. Hey, but today we're going to review. We're going to review everything we've covered in the first nine programs. We've been talking about the symbols of the Holy Spirit. And throughout the Old and the New Testament, there are symbols or there are metaphors which describe the various works of the Holy Spirit. So grab your Bible, and today we're going to be looking at some examples. And we're going to begin with number one. We're going to review all 15 of them very quickly. Number one, we saw that in the Old and the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is depicted as anointing oil 200 times. That's very important. In fact, that is the number one most widely used symbol of the Holy Spirit in the whole Bible. The word oil, the word anointing, is the Greek word krio. It pictures God putting his hands on us and massaging the oil of the Holy Spirit deeply into our lives. And we find this illustration in 2 Corinthians 1, verse 21, where the Apostle Paul writes, Now he which has established us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. The moment you get saved, God lays his hand on your life and places the Holy Spirit into you. The moment you're born again, you become anointed with the oil of the Holy Spirit. And he's with you to the end of your life and all the way to heaven. But number two, we saw from Psalm 133, the Holy Spirit is like dew. You say, Rick, what do you mean by that? Well, listen to this verse. Psalm 133, I'm going to read verses 1 to 3. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious ointment upon the head. There we have an illustration of the Holy Spirit as oil. But wait, it continues. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, and went down to the skirts of his garment as the dew, the dew of Hermon. And here we find the Holy Spirit symbolized as dew. As the dew that descendeth on the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commands the blessing, even life forevermore. And in this remarkable verse, we find a truth about the Holy Spirit. When God's people get into unity, just like verse 1 says, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Unity creates the right conditions for the Holy Spirit to show up and touch everybody. Just like there's moisture in the air that you cannot see, if the atmospheric conditions are correct, suddenly all that moisture shows up as do. It touches every blade of grass, all the lawn furniture, everything is touched when dew shows up. And here we find a corporate anointing that when God's people get into unity, the Holy Spirit whom you cannot see, suddenly his power shows up everywhere. Everyone in the whole place gets touched when the Holy Spirit shows up like dew. Then number three, we saw that in Joel chapter 2, verse 23, the Holy Spirit is symbolized as rain. Listen to this wonderful verse. 
Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former lane moderately, and he will cause to come forth down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And then in Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and 29, God speaks about what's going to happen to the church at the very end of the church age. That's us. It says, and it shall come to pass afterward, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your shot daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out of my spirit. And here we see the Holy Spirit depicted as rain, and particularly an early rain and a latter rain. Well, in Israel, there was an earlier rain which was required to prepare the soil, to soften the soil for an eventual harvest. Then the seeds were planted. And then later there came the latter rain, which really caused the growth of the crops. My friend, Pentecost was the early rain. When God was preparing the world for the preaching of the gospel, where we're living in the end of the age, when God is going to give us a latter rain. We've already experienced some of it, but there's going to be a greater outpouring, a greater rain of the Spirit the closer we come to the rapture of the church. The early rain and the latter rain, God's going to pour His Spirit out like rain upon all flesh. That's what the Bible says. The Holy Spirit is like rain. But then when you come to John chapter 7, Jesus likened the Holy Spirit to a river. Listen to what he said. John 7 verse 38. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Living water in Greek describes water that is filled with vibrancy and life. I don't know if you've ever seen a beautiful river running through nature. It's filled with fish. It's filled with life. It's filled with oxygen. It is so powerful. And there's different kinds of rivers. There's shallow rivers, which make a lot of noise. There's deeper rivers, which are stronger, but they're nearly silent. My friends, when the Holy Spirit moves, sometimes it's noisy, sometimes it's deep, sometimes it's quiet. But one thing is sure, like a river, the Holy Spirit will remove every resisting force and He will flood us with divine life. But hold on. Then you come to 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13, where we find the Holy Spirit is likened unto water. And in Isaiah 44, the Bible says God will pour His Spirit like water, like water, upon anyone that is thirsty. So if you're thirsty for more, God wants to give you the water of the Holy Spirit. And 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13 says, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and we've all been made to drink into that one Spirit. The word drink, the Greek word pino, it means to really drink, to be imbibed, to consume something. It's even the word to be irrigated, which means if you're hungry and if you're thirsty, God will pour His Spirit out upon you like water. And even if you feel you've been dried and parched ground, God will imbibe you with His Spirit. He'll irrigate you so you can begin to produce fruit again. I think that's amazing. So if you're hungry for more, just say, Holy Spirit, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. Please irrigate me. That's God's will for you. But then we come to number six. And number six, we see the Holy Spirit is symbolized by fire. We see this particularly in Matthew 3, verse 11, where John the Baptist is speaking about Jesus. And John the Baptist says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, that he that cometh after me is mightier than I. He's talking about Jesus whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And here we find the Holy Spirit symbolized as fire. You've got to think about fire. Fire burns. Fire burns up rubbish. Fire is used to purify. And when the Holy Spirit begins to work in our life, he begins to burn all the rubbish out of our lives and he begins a work of purification. But fire is also used to empower big engines. And we see in Acts chapter 2 
that when the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, cloven tongues as fire set above them. They were lit with spiritual fire when the Holy Spirit began to move and they were empowered and energized by that divine fire to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. We need the fire of the Holy Spirit. But then when you come to Matthew 3.16, you find the Holy Spirit is also depicted as a dove. Listen to this. Matthew 3.16 says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. It does not say the Holy Spirit was a bird. It does not say that. It says the Holy Spirit descended like a dove. This is symbolic language to describe the gentleness and the tenderness of the Holy Spirit as He works in our life. He's like a dove. He's so soft. He's so tender. He is so gentle. But when you come to Luke 24, verse 49, we find the next ninth symbol of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is symbolized as clothing. Listen to this verse. Jesus said to the disciples, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued, oh, there's that word endued, with power from on high. The word endued in Greek is the word enduo. It's very similar to the word endued. It means to be dressed in a new set of clothing, to be arrayed in new clothes, but it also means to sink into a garment. You're so comfortable in these clothes, you just sink into them. They become your regular clothing. And by using this word, Jesus tells us God's intention was never for you just to have an encounter with divine power and lose it. God's intention is for you to settle into power, to settle into it for it to become regular and habitual in your life, that you be clothed. And here we find the word clothing is used to depict one of the works of the Holy Spirit. Then number nine, wow. We find the Holy Spirit as wind, wind. In Acts 2 verse 2, the Bible says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. It was like a rushing, mighty wind. That word mighty in Greek describes something that nearly sounds violent. When the Bible says a rushing, mighty wind, it's another Greek word, which was used in Luke 21, verse 5, to describe the roar of the sea in the middle of a sea storm. If you've ever been near a sea storm, you know it is so loud you can't even hear the person standing next to you when they try to speak to you. You have to yell at each other because of the roar of the sea. When the Holy Spirit descended into the upper room in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, it was not a quiet event. It was noisy. The Holy Spirit came like a rushing, mighty wind. In fact, the verse says it filled the whole house. They could not escape from the sound of it. They couldn't see it because he came like wind. But they could hear it. They could feel it. And likewise, you can't see the Holy Spirit, but when he begins to move, he moves like wind. And you can feel the effects. And remember, wind is so powerful, it can change topography. It can change geography. And when the Holy Spirit begins to move like wind in a life or a church or a nation, the Holy Spirit begins to change everything on the horizon. I think that is so powerful. Then number 10, we saw that in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is symbolized as a gift. We saw this in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to us. Have you unwrapped the gift? Or have you just been holding the gift? Why would you have a package that you never unwrapped? Take off the ribbons, take off the wrapping, dive in. God has given you a gift. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit, and God wants you to explore it and to enjoy the gift that He's given you. Number 11, the Holy Spirit is symbolized as a seal. We see this in Ephesians 1.13, when the Bible says, In whom also you were trusted, 
after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also you believed, and you were sealed, sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. That word sealed, the Greek word is describes a seal that was placed on a package after the package had been inspected and they were sure all the contents were in order and were impeccable. And here it describes the work of God. When we believe the gospel and release our faith, we are created brand new. We're brand new creatures, so marvelous. God says, wow, that package is impeccable. Everything's whole, nothing's broken. I'm going to seal it with my spirit. And the seal was also the postage to guarantee that package was going to make it all the way to its ultimate destination. When you receive the Holy Spirit is God's guarantee, you're going to make it all the way to heaven. And then, number 12, the Holy Spirit is likened unto an earnest. We read this in Ephesians 1 verse 14, where the Bible says the Holy Spirit is the earnest, the earnest of our inheritance. That word earnest is really the word for a down payment or the guarantee that the whole deal eventually in the future is going to be wrapped up. When God gave you the Holy Spirit, it was the equivalent to saying, hey guys, this is just a foretaste of what's coming and my guarantee, I'm going to finally wrap up this deal when you're fully redeemed and you're in heaven. I'm going to take this deal all the way to the end. The Holy Spirit is God's down payment to guarantee he's going to finish the whole task. That is amazing. Number 13, we saw the Holy Spirit is likened unto glory. He's called the spirit of glory. In 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 14, he comes like glory. He's heavy with everything good. The Holy Spirit is filled with treasures and power and gifts. And the Holy Spirit comes with glory that is loaded to meet every need in our lives. That's amazing. Number 14, the Holy Spirit is likened unto light. We saw this in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6, where the Bible says, God has shined into our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And God does that through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes with light. He shines his beam right on every part of our life that needs to change. And then number 15, we saw last of all, the Holy Spirit is likened unto wine. Ephesians 5 verse 18 says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye being continually filled with the Holy Spirit. And my friends, when you are imbibed on the Holy Spirit, it changes your behavior. It changes everything in your life. I call it the intoxicating effect of the Holy Spirit. He changes what you feel. He changes what you see. He changes how you behave. You become controlled by the Spirit when you're filled with the wine of the Holy Spirit. Fifteen symbols of the Holy Spirit in the Old and in the New Testament. And when you understand all of these symbols, it really gives you a full picture of the Holy Spirit's work in your life. Now, you may know more symbols than that, but these are 15 really important symbols that we need to understand. We're out of time. I'll be back in just a moment, and I want to pray for you. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to the church, and the Bible is jam-packed with insights into the person, power, and work of the Holy Spirit. The Bible provides a long list of symbols of the Holy Spirit that are powerful and important for you to understand. In this 10-part series, Symbols of the Holy Spirit, Rick Renner expounds on these symbols and how they are used throughout the Bible. Rick covers the person, power, and work of the Holy Spirit, the symbols of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, the symbols of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, the rich relationship with the Holy Spirit that is awaiting you. Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $20, you'll be so glad you invested in this powerful series. In addition, you can also order Rick Renner's book, The Holy Spirit in You. In this book, you'll learn that the secret to sustaining strength is fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. This life-changing book can be yours for $15. You can also order the book, Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. This book will give you a new understanding of the gifts of the Spirit and how you can operate in the supernatural power that God has given you. It can be yours today for $10. Don't miss this special offer, this series, Symbols of the Holy Spirit, and the books, The Holy Spirit in You, and Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call and get these powerful resources today. My name is Joel Renner coming to you from Moscow, Russia, and I want to say thank you to all of our ministry partners. Your support has allowed us to help special needs children in Russia. Because of you, we are able to help children with disabilities. Because of your gifts, we are able to give them attention and care. We're even able to provide outings for their parents where they can enjoy their children as a family with no worries or concerns. Your gifts have lifted their burdens. Several times a year, we put on a children's musical that are based on Bible stories so these children can learn about God's Word and His great love for them. Parents and grandparents who accompany them fill the church in anticipation for this outreach. When you give to Renner Ministries, you can bring joy to these children and give them the hope of God's Word. Will you consider joining us as a partner today so we can continue helping these beautiful children? Without your support, we simply cannot do this. Please call or go online right now. When generous, caring people like you give, we are able to give these children with special needs the care and attention they need so desperately. Please call us or go online to winner.org. Through your donations of any size, we can continue to make a huge difference in these children's lives. Well, today I've wrapped up my teaching on symbols of the Holy Spirit in the Old and in the New Testament, we have covered so much. Every single program has just been packed with what I consider to be wonderful revelations. Really affected me. I hope it's encouraged you. And I want you to get the whole series, which is called Symbols of the Holy Spirit. It's 10 parts. What a wonderful gift for you to give to somebody who's really hungry for more of the Holy Spirit. And it comes with a study guide. It is just a tremendous gift for somebody else or for you. And we also want you to get my book called Why We Need the Gifts of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit and You Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. And remember, my friend, we want to pray for you. This is the end of the week. And if you need prayer as you go into the weekend, call us or send us your email. And we'll begin to bolster you with our prayers and belief for God to do something marvelous in your weekend. And then we'll see you again on Monday where we're going to start with a brand new series. But let me pray for you right now. Father, we thank you for the marvelous work of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that when we got saved, you laid your hands on us and you pressed the Holy Spirit like oil into our life. And we have the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to move in our life. We remove all the restrictions. We want you to do all these marvelous 15 things in each of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. I have so enjoyed teaching this series and sharing this time with you. Hey, we're going to be back on Monday. But remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Rick Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.